Shalom, Pastor Hawkman, back at you. With this truth, giving all praises to Yahweh Bashem, El Shabbat Bashem, And I'm going to entitle this video the Russia Ukraine Crisis and Other Topics. Anyway, what I was doing was for the last um, hour and change was looking for a, a topic to go into. You know, we've been teaching nonstop for 15 years, going on 15 years. And um, we covered everything. We covered all the breakdowns, the various uh, prophecies. You know, we showed you how to deal with the blue letter, how to uh, gather information, how to go to the news and uh, filter it through prophecy. Anyway, um, everybody, and a mom is talking about this uh, uh, Russia Ukraine uh, crisis. And, uh, you know, you got people that now everybody's getting spiritual, everybody's getting biblical, everybody's uh, mentioning uh, Gog and Magog. Like I said in my last, the last video I did yesterday, last night. Um, I said even Karen Hunter, if you listen to Karen Hunter on XM Radio, she even mentioned that. She said she wanted to get a panel of pastors to break this thing down. I hope I can catch it just to see what they're going to say. Because now these Christians that's been playing games with the scriptures not really going into prophecy, now they're forced to go into prophecy. Because they're going to be asked, you know, what is this all about? And how does this Russia-Ukraine thing um, fit in the, fit in the uh, prophetic part of the scriptures. And that's the main thing we should be talking about is the prophecies. Like I said, we taught you everything. We taught you all the breakdowns. We went into Genesis 1, Genesis 2, Genesis 3. Um, the history, we spoke about David. We spoke about Solomon coming back as a as, uh, Yahweh Shai, we went into the, the New Testament, uh, Matthews uh, 24, Luke 21, uh, Mark 13, which all say pretty much the same thing. So you had the account of, of Matthew and you had the account of uh, Luke and Mark, so, but they all pretty much say the same thing. So bottom line is, there's going to be a time where this place is going to come to an end. And we also taught you who you are as Israelites and who the wicked, um, who, are, who are the wicked on the planet Earth, which are Edomites, Esau. And we also taught you a lot of Hebrew. We went into the, the spirit led me to the blue letter. And I introduced the blue letter to uh, the apostles and the, uh, the bishops and the elders. And they all go into it because it's a go-to um, site. You know, when you go through these scriptures, you look up certain words. Now, mind you, in the blue letter, they go off on certain things. Like, for example, if you put in, I believe it's Esau, if you either, either put in Esau in blue letter or the Edomites, all the Idumians, they tell you that the Idumians are the Edomites, which go back to Esau. The first Edomite was Esau. But then they tell you in the blue letter, oh, those are the, that's an Arab, Arab nation. That ain't no Arab nation. That's, we, we know that that's, it's the Edomites. I did a, put a video up and I put in the word, I believe I put in the word Edom or Esau. At the end of the video, and I went to Google and I clicked on images, and I said, "Yeah, look at that. That's the Edomite right there. That's the Edomite right there." And they took my video down. I'm wondering why did they take my video down? Because I really didn't say nothing negative. I didn't. I didn't. You know, go into the to the uh, Crown Vic and all that. So what the hell did I say? And I kept. And I went to the almost to the end, and that part with with E. I said, that's why they took it down. And I didn't say nothing. 
I just said, let's put in the word E. You know what word I want to, I got to be careful as to what I say. We got to speak in code. I said, I put in E, I clicked Google, I hit images, and who, who popped up? Pick, pictures of E. And I say, look at that, that's an E over there. Look at that, that's an E, that's an E. And all of a sudden, they're offended at this. You know, like the Apostle Paul said, am I become your enemy because I give you the truth? Galatians uh, 4 and 16. Anyway, let me, okay, it says uh, Russia, Ukraine crisis. Let me just click on this. And I want to go to, I want to give you precepts, but I want to go to uh, Isaiah the 13th chapter and I'm going to go to a certain part of Isaiah 13. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run down the whole chapter of Isaiah 13, which gives you an idea of the cruelty of Esau because, because um, and I'm going to go right into it in, in Isaiah 13. Um, where it speaks about the Medes not caring for, you know, mothers and I'm merely paraphrasing babies, not caring for children. Well, it was in the news today. They playing it all day today that um, the Russians. Well, there was one part to show you the cruelty. The horns coming out on these devils on the other side. And see. Russia is ultimately a part of the beast in the big picture. It's just not part of NATO and the EU. When you go to Revelation the thir uh, 13 chapter, it speaks about it, had a head like a le leopard, a melee par paraphrase, and I'm not saying it word for word, and the feet of a bear. So the head of a leopard is the beginning of the, of the, of the, uh, the rulership of Esau. And they came in stages. And the end of it is the feet of a bear. What is the end of you? You start from the head, you wind up in the feet. So the end is the feet of a bear, which is Russia. And it's and it's not gonna, it's not talking about Russia coming together with the other Edomite kingdoms. It's talking about they're the ones that's gonna take this place out. Now, in uh the news, like I said earlier today, I was saying it all day. Well, first thing in the morning, I caught it, where they uh, had, uh, there was 13 Ukrainian men, I believe they were naval or whatever. I got to go back to the story. And the Russian, the Russians were in a ship and the commander of the ship said, you got to surrender. And they said, if you don't surrender, we're going we're gonna to do something to you, we're going to hit you. And he said, what's, what's your response to what I just said? And one of the guys from among the Ukrainian men, they said, go F yourself. And right after that, they put him to death. They fired him up. They killed all 13 of them. Now, the Ukrainians, they love to fight. I said, I said in the other video, now the, the, the president, the, the, the president or the premier, whatever his title is, he says he's going to be in the fight. He's going to be in the front line. And that's what they did. The king, kings in the ancient world, they were in the front of the battle, man. You got this guy. You got the Vitaly Klitschko, the brother of uh, Vladimir Klitschko, that were two boxes from out of the Ukraine that were both champions. They, had the, they held the championship at the same time. And one of them, I think, held one or two belts, and the other one held two of the belts because there's only four world championship belts. And they were reigning for a while. They were beating the hell, beating the hell out of Jake, you know? But the, the oldest one, Vitaly, said that he's going to put on a uniform and he's going to fight. He's going he gonna to fight this thing to the death. Now, they have a law in the Ukraine because of this act of war, because it's definitely an act of war. That no man, women and children can leave, but uh, no man can leave. No grown up man can leave. He has to stay. And why, did it, why, why was that order put down? Because they got to fight for their country. 
There was one guy that from the Ukraine that lives in Poland. There's a lot, there's a big Polish, uh, big Ukrainian community in Poland. And one guy said, look, if, if things get better, I'm not gonna go. But if things get worse, I'm gonna go and fight. And if need be, he said, die for his, for his country. So these people are real about, and they go, and that's a, this is a slaughter. The, Rus the Russians are too big and strong militarily. They're going to slaughter them, man. They're going to slaughter them. Now, we don't know what's going to happen. But so I, I spoke about the 13 minute, we'll just put the death on the spot. It took not even a minute, not even a minute. The Russian commander said something. They said something back. They said, go F yourself. And they took them out. No more negotiations. Now, Esau over here in America, they're not like that, man. Well, they are, are like that with Jake. But with, Esau, with their own kind, they're going to try to work out an agreement. But guess what? The Ukrainians are Russians. Rem remember, Ukraine was a part of the former Soviet Union. So all they're trying to do is they build them back the Russia again. And it speaks about, because all, all these provinces of the former Soviet Union are really states or countries or nations. Even, even the people of Ukraine, some of them don't even speak Russian. Some of them speak Russian and Ukrainian and others just speak Ukrainian. And they said, look, we're not going, on, we're not coming under the Russians. And that's, that breakup took place what would the Zach? Yeah, I don't know. It was early the early nineties? The uh, USSR uh, broke up, and they were catching hell too. They was a lot of them were starving. Anyway, um, another thing that happened later to today. They said, um, "Any of you soldiers that are Ukrainian that." are going to fight for your freedoms to hold your country. He said, look, we're going to get you and we're going to get your family. We're going to go after your family. We're going to kill your family. I mean, we're going to kill, we're going to kill your, uh, your children. We're going to kill your mother. We're going to kill your grandmother. We're going to kill your daughters, your sons, your wives, we're going to kill them. We don't got to get to you. We're going we, we to get to you by getting to them. So immediately I thought about Isaiah the 13th chapter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read Isaiah the 13th chapter because I put it in YouTube to see how many times it came up from many of the Israelite camps. And the one breakdown came up, which was put up by a member of GMS. Other than that, there's no... Like if you want to go into Isaiah 13 and you go to YouTube, you ain't going to find it. Like I said, there's one, now there's going to be two. And I'm pretty sure we did other videos, but somehow you, 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 your sites get taken down and so forth. But anyway, I want to go into Isaiah 13. And um, the key point is further down in the chapter. But I want to start at uh, the first verse, because this is the time to go into these prophecies. We've gone over these prophecies time and time again. But now these prophecies speak louder. They scream to us now. We can see it. And this current war, this crisis, it's not going to call, you know, call for the end of the world. Because like I said, the main prophecy that has to be fulfilled before the destruction is the MOTV. You heard it here. You heard it from the members of GMS. The other camps, well, there's, well, Sakari teaches about the MOTV. And, um, and they should be pushing it more. And um, the HODC knows, but they don't push it. They just know it. If you go to their page, they ain't gonna have no pages on the MOTB. Anyway, so it says, and this is a short chapter, 
22 verses long. I'm just breeze, breeze to it until I get to the point. It said, the burden of Babylon, which we know is America, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see, lift ye up a, a banner upon the high mountains, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the noble, nobles. So we're at the gates of the nobles. They know about us, but they haven't introduced us to the world. I have commanded my sanctified ones, which are sanctified meaning holy, also sanctified meaning to be undefiled. You are to be sanctified on the Sabbath. If you have sex with, with a woman, you are not sanctified. I have also called my mighty ones for my anger, even them that rejoice in my, my highness. That's talking about the, the angels. Angels are talking about, talked about in uh, Revelation 9, Revelation 16, all throughout the scriptures. The noise of a multitude of mountains, like as a great people, the tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gather together, the Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the, of the battle, right? Let me take the word nations. And let me. Bring this over here. Let me do this. Jeremiah 50. Put in the word nations. If it's not in this one chapter, it's in the next chapter. Okay, it says, declare ye among the nations. Okay, this is why Russia wants to take back the Ukraine. And they're going to take it back too. It said, for lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country. So when you go to the world map, what's the other uttermost north? Russia. So they got to get the, the they got to gather the nation, those Soviet Union states. That's why it was called the, the uh, what is it? Uh, Russian so Soviet Socialist uh, Republic, which is which is a union. It's just like the United States. You have New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Texas. Uh, uh, Colorado, uh, California, North Dakota, South Dakota, Dakota, which are all separate states, which by law, they're separate countries, but they all came together, united. So the same thing in Russia. So guess what? The, uh, the Ukraine, and they sup I believe they sup supply like 75% of the wheat to, to the rest of Russia. So they're, so they're um, big in wheat, you know, they're, 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 their resource is wheat. So there's a, that's a major commodity right there. So they're gonna gather them, they're gonna gather all them nations together to form the former, the former USSR once again. As if for lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the North country. So we know it's talking about Russia. The United States is known as the North, but the uttermost North is, is uh, which is Northeast. Well, it's on the other side of the world, the other side of the, uh, of the Pacific, you got China, and then you got Russia, which is North of that. Russia, Russia is North of India and China. So that's the country, the North country, but they got to gather the other states that broke up. It said from the North country, which is Russia, and they shall set themselves in array against her, Babylon the Great, from thence she shall be taken. Their arrows, ICBM missiles, shall be as of a mighty expert man, none shall return in, in vain.
I got it. Let me go to the 12th verse of the same chapter. Jeremiah 50, verse 12. Your mother, which is England, because it's talking, this chapter is talking about Babylon. Babylon the Great. Who is the mother of Babylon the Great? England, Great Britain. Shall be sore confounded. She that bear you shall be ashamed. Behold, the hindermost of the nations shall be a wilderness, a dry land in the desert. The, 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 the hindermost of the nations, the nation that is furthest out will be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. That's Babylon the Great. And the mother of Babylon the Great, or the USA, is Great Britain, England, the United Kingdom, the UK. And it said they're going to be confounded and ashamed. They're going to be ashamed of America. That's in Revelation 17 and 12, one down. The 10 horns. Now, we, now mind you that the, the uh, Great Britain, England, broke off from among the 10 horns, which now there's 29 horns. But they're still a part of a NATO. They're a NATO nation. You know, if you, if you look up NATO nations, Great Britain is a part of it. And guess what? NATO and, and uh, the, e, the EU nations, that's part of one, that, that one beast. But they're breaking up right now. It says 13, Jeremiah 15, verse 13, because of the wrath, anger of the Yahweh, it shall not be inhabited but it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and hissed at her plagues. What are her plagues? What are her plagues? The missiles. It says, for her plagues shall come in one hour, Revelation 18. For her plagues shall come in one hour. Death, mourning. How's it going? Let me, let me go to that. No. Uh, let me do this. Uh, we we in the time of the fulfillment of these uh, prophecies. Let me do this. Revelation eighteen. Okay, it says, Revelation 18, 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, morning, famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is Yahweh, the Most High, who judges her. Like I said in previous videos, all of these prophecies that the Most High gave to the various prophets, when it speaks about the fire and the destruction of Babylon, is all talking about the same thing. So now let's come back over here. The hinder part, hinder most of the nation, like I said, is talking about the U.S. That's also in Acts chapter one. You can start from like the fifth, sixth verse, and it says you're gonna that they're gonna speak an, uh, to the uttermost part of the earth, which is America. It says the apostles are gonna do that. So the apostles, the disciples, the teachers, the the the, the prophets. They're here in the uttermost or hindermost part of the nations, which is America. That's why this truth came out of America. So when you read this, uh, uh, Jeremiah 50, and you know, this chapter, it goes hand in hand with Isaiah, uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 13. It goes hand in hand with Isaiah chapter 14. It goes hand in hand with uh, Zechariah 14, that whole chapter. Fourteen verse, put yourself in array against Babylon round about, all ye that bend the bow, start the bend the bow is the uh, nuclear silos, shoot at her. What are they gonna shoot at her? The ICBMs, spare no arrows. So all these 
missiles, these ICBMs have been built up through the years, they're all going to shoot off. The Most High is going to ignite all of them. For she have sinned against Yahweh. Shout against her round about. She have given her hand. Uh, her, her foundations are fallen. We were in a major economic crisis. Now uh, Biden's been talking about uh, hyperinflation. Now you don't want to experience no hyperinflation. That's when if you get up in the morning, you buy a box of cereal for $3. Two hours later, it could be $30. Then two days later, it could be $300. And see, the, the so-called American people, that includes Jake, you don't know what's going on. You, your mentality is like an a, a ostrich. You stick your, whole, your head in a hole, and then you don't realize that your ass is showing. Yeah, people, don't, people are not, you, you, there's no urgency to Jake because they don't know what the fuck is going on. And these people over there in, um, in the Ukraine, they're fucking stressed out. Because, you know, it, it said in the news, I believe it was, I believe the number was either 50,000 or 500,000. And that was as of the, this morning and the night before that those many people fled out of uh, the Ukraine. And they just started, the Russians just started bombing. They just started bombing buildings, man. Now, we don't, go, we don't know what's going to happen in the next couple of days, but guess what? A lot of major things, either this thing is going to be quelled down or they're just going to take, they're going, their plan is to take the uh, premier down and put a puppet leader up in there. Like I said, they can't, they're going to fight. They, they, they got heart. They got, you know, cojones, as they say, but they're going to lose, man. It's just like a guy that's uh, 150 pounds with a, with a lot of heart fighting a guy that's 350 pounds. You might get up there to fight. Oh, he put up a good fight, but now he they, the, the, the big guy laid him flat. That's Russia is the giant, the giant to this small nation. It says, shout against her roundabout. She have given her hand, her foundations are fallen. Economically, she's all messed up. Morally, she's all messed up. What, what, what's left for the Most High to do with this place? It's, all, it's dead. It, 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 most High ready to take this place. This place is dead. Her walls are thrown down, for it is the vengeance of Yahweh. Uh, vengeance of the Lord, Yahweh, taking vengeance upon her as she have done unto, as she, as she have done, do unto her. That's also in Revelation uh, chapter, chapter 18, like I said. It said, cut off the sower from Babylon and him that, that uh, handleth the sickle. For the harvest, for the time of the harvest, for fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn everyone to his people. That's also in Isaiah 13. And they shall flee everyone to his own land. Now we know this next verse is talking about Nebuchadnezzar because uh, Jeremiah thought that this was talking about, that this was describing what was going to happen in ancient Babylon. No, this is America. So Jeremiah didn't understand what was going on. So anyway, let's come back. It says, uh, I'm sorry. Revelation 13. Four verse. The noise of a multitude in the, mount, in the mountains, like as a great people in the tumult, tumultuous noise of the kingdom gathered, nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mother is the host of the battle because there's nothing that these devils could do to stop this destruction of Babylon, to, to, to stop, stop the, um, the downfall of Esau's uh, rulership. Because this is the most highest war. This is the most highest movie. 
They come from a far country from the end of the earth, uh, even the Yahweh and the weapons of his nation, which are the ICBM missiles, to destroy the whole land. That's Babylon the Great. Judgment on the day of Yahweh. How ye for the day, for the day of Yahweh is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. And we're going to get to the, to the part with Russia. Now, like I said, the Russians made a statement. They said, look, we don't got to get you um, uh, soldiers of Ukraine. We're going to get your children. We're going to get your wife. We're going to get your grandmother. We're going to get your children. We're going to get your pregnant wives. We're just going to kill them. So it's going to say that as we get to it. It says, uh, this is the time that we're supposed to be going into these prophecies, man. You're supposed to be reading these prophecies over and over and over again. You're supposed to understand and read the whole book, but the main, what does it say in the Apocrypha? It says that ye be occupied in prophecies. Let me, let me pull that up. I believe it's Sarah 39 and one, if I'm not mistaken, but let me do this. Let's see. Go to the pocket for only. Okay, I was right. Ecclesiasticus, which is the book of Sarah 39, verse 1. So it says, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 39, verse 1. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancients and be occupied in prophecies. So what part of the book are we mostly into right now? Pro the prophecies. And he and be occupied with prophecies. Let's see what Ecclesiasticus 44 verse 3 says. Such as did bear rule in their kingdoms, men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies. So when I read, I open up with the book of Isaiah. I went to the book of Jeremiah 50, and I, then it took me to uh, Revelation 18. Those are all prophetic books. It says what? Men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring what? Prophecies. Let's see what Ecclesiastes 46 and 1 says. Okay, it says, uh, jo I must read as Joshua. Oh, yeah, how was I? Uh, Joshua, the son of Nun, which was the second in command under Moses, was valiant in the wars and was the successor of Moses in what? In prophecies. In prophecies. So what was uh, Joshua? He was, a pro he was a leader, but he was also a prophet. And he was a warrior. He was one of the spies. Um, Aaron was a was a, a, a prophet because of Most High told Moses, "I will make you a god to Moses, unto Pharaoh, and your and Aaron, your brother, will be your prophet." So guess what? Aaron was a prophet. Um, Moses was a prophet of the Lord. He made a lot of prophecies. He, he even recited one of the Psalms, which shows you that he, David, it says, and according to his name was made great for the saving of the what? Ooh, of the elect of the Most High. So at the end of the day, the Apostle Gabar goes into that. He always talks, it's not about saving everybody, all the Israelites, it's about the elect. And, that, and this is what, here it is. Saving of the elect of the Most High and taking vengeance of the enemies, Esau, number one on the list, that rose up against them, that he might set Israel, the national Israel, in 
their inheritance, which is the kingdom of heaven. So let's come back. Uh, Isaiah 13 and 8. It says, and they shall be afraid, pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travails. They shall be amazed one, one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Their faces is also a facade. Your facade is going to be on fire. Behold, the day of Yahweh cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger to lay, lay, the, lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it, which are Israelites and out of the elect. I just wanted to jump, I'm going to jump the gun. Uh, 15 verse, everyone that is found shall be thrust through and everyone that is joined unto them, the enemy shall fall by the sword. So this is talking about you Israelites that are married to Edomites, you know, that, that have good Edomite friends that say that Edomites are going to make it, you join unto them and you're going to die by the sword, you're going to fall by the sword. Now we're getting into the meat. Babylon will fall to the Medes, which are the Russians. See, right north of the Medes is uh, a Gog, and Gog, as they say, Gog and Magog. That's the land of the 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 Scythians. The Scythians. It's hard for me to say that. I said, their children also shall be dashed to pieces from what? The missiles before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. They said, behold, I will stir up the Medes, which are the Russians, against them, like, like he did against, currently against the Ukraine. They're going to make it, they're going to make it, they're going to, you know, make a statement. You got to do, do this and, and this under the Russian Republic. And when a person has a problem with it, they're just going to kill him on the spot. And he already did it with those 13 men. The one guy among the 13, he said, go F yourself. And they opened up on him, man. Took him out. And no more the same. Ukrainians are, are Russians, man. They're the same people. So if they, if they killed the, the same, their same people that way, what you think they, what you think they're going to think about America, man? And them crazy ass Russians, they want the American troops to, to, to come over. Because that's going to be hate personified, man. Hate to the 18th power. The Russians are growing to hate the Americans, man. They always hated the Americans. They said, Behold, I, I will stir up the Medes, which are the, actually the Russians. And, they, and the most I had to put it in that, that way. Because if they said Russians, or they said, instead of saying Babylon, they say America, UJs wouldn't have no Bible. They would, they would outlaw the scriptures. In slavery, they didn't want Jake to read, especially the Bible. Behold, I will stir up the Medes, the Russians, against them, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. There's going to come be a point where the Russian powers, the ruling powers, they're going, to, they, they're going to say, look, we don't want no gold. We don't want to sit down and negotiate. Oh, the premier or the president of the Ukraine, he said, can we sit down at the table and negotiate? Putin ain't having that. He said, no, nah, we we, there's no negotiation. We're just going to take your land. We're going to get you out of office and we're going to put a puppet leader in your office. It's a, because they have the might, they have the military might, they have the they, they have the manpower. And there was a treaty that was made 
with the Ukraine to give up their ICBMs. If they had, I, I know they had nuclear weapons. I don't know if they had ice, but they had powerful weapons. And they made a treaty with Russia and the U.S. And they said, look, we're going to give up the, Rush, the, 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 the nuclear uh, uh, power in the form of weapons. But you got to make a promise to protect us. So guess what? The Russians reneged on what they said. They were going to protect. They didn't, well, they didn't tell them, yeah, we'll protect you, but we ain't going to protect you from ourselves. It said their, their bows shall also dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Let me make the statement again. They said, look, we don't have to get... We don't have to get the so. Hold up, let me close this. Bear me for a minute. Let me come back over here. They made that statement, man. They said, "Look, we're not, we're not concerned about you, soldiers. You go out to fight against us in the field. We're going going in the cities, and we're going we're going to kill your 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 wife, your pregnant wife, your daughters, your sons." your grandmothers, your mothers, your, and your fathers. We, we will wipe you out if we have to. Because all they got to do is fill the Ukraine up with other Russians. And they, and they, and they would prefer to have it that way. And that's that, the same attitude they're going to have when they declare war against Babylon the Great. It says in Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the child, I'm sorry, let me read the 18 verse again. Their bows, which is the silos, also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. And they made the statement. They made that statement. And if they made that statement, they mean it. That's that cruel spirit, you know, coming up in, inside of Esau. Remember, the Russians are Edomites too. They shall come down with great wrath because they know they have a, a, a short time. They're coming down with great, great uh, uh, anger. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, which is the U.S., the beauty of the child, these excellencies shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, I want to try something. Take the word Sodom. And Sodom is in the scriptures eight, 48 times. Okay, it says here, Genesis 19, verse 24, then Yahweh rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from Yahweh out of heaven. So the Most High is going to do that again because in Revelation, the ninth chapter, it compares the missiles to fire and brimstone in Revelation chapter 9. So this time, the Most High just split the atom and caused... Uh, the fire from the missiles, which were not missiles. He didn't make missiles. He just caused the fire to come down. This, this time, he put it in the minds of the Edomite scientists to make these missiles. It says, uh, 28 verse, and he looked toward, you know, this is uh, Abraham, and he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and, and toward all the land of the plain and behold, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. And that's the same way this place is going to be taken out. Here it is again, Deuteronomy 29, verse 23. And that the whole land thereof uh, is uh, brimstone and salt and burning that it is not sown 
uh, nor bareth, uh, nor any uh, grass groweth therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma Zabom. And there was another, there was another one, another city, which Yahweh overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. And the Most High destroyed that place in hate and wrath. It says here, Jeremiah 49, verse 18, as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities thereof, saith the Most High, Yahweh, no man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. He's talking about Esau. Yeah, the Most High, man, he uses the reference given to the prophets of Sodom and Gomorrah. A, a, a lot of, uh, there's, a, there's a, a bunch of scriptures on that, man. So the Most High had some real hatred for Sodom and Gomorrah. So when the Most High is comparing this place, Babylon the Great, to Sodom and Gomorrah, and we know, know why this is the great Sodom and Gomorrah. Revelation, uh, what is that? Revelation 11. Spiritually, Sodom and Egypt. And like I said, you got Jake that are nonchalant. Well, you got Esau. Some of them are kind of concerned. But you got Jake, they're nonchalant, but they don't know what the hell is going on. So they're just going to get caught out there. <laughs> Jeremiah 50 and 40, as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and the neighboring cities thereof, say of the Most High, so shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. Lamentation 4, verse 6, for the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people is great, greater than the punishment of the sin of, ooh, the Most High saying, you Israelites are wickeder than the acts of Sodom and Gomorrah. That's why it says, they that are joined with them shall be what? Thrust through with the sword. That was overthrown as in a moment and no one uh, stayed on her. Here it is again, Amos uh, 4 and 11. I have overthrown some of you as the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and ye were as a firebrand plucked out of, out of the burning. You know, when you pluck somebody out before they get burnt, burnt up, they, they save you in the nick of time. It says, yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. So the Most High had mercy on Jake on many occasions, but they went back being wicked. Even, even our Lord spoke about that. Matthew 10, verse 15, Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in that day of judgment than for that city. So when you go and teach Jake and they come up against you and they scoff against you, the Lord said, look, you're gonna, they're going to get a worse punishment than, than Sodom and Gomorrah. Another reference to Sodom. Matthew 11, verse 23. And now Capernaum, which are exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. Now we know that heaven that heaven and hell and this preset right here is talking about Capernaum being 
a rich uh, city. And hell meaning it's going to become a ghost town. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee have been done in Sodom, it would have re remained until this day. Yeah, this right here, second, second Peter 2, verse 6. This is how we know this place is going to be destroyed. This system is going to be destroyed because they passed laws to protect Moses. It says, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemning them with an overthrow, making them an, an, an sample or example unto those that after should live on Gali. So this place is the is a is a is a these people are the ungodly. Spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. The ungodly. We look that up. We're going to go through a few precepts on that. Then I'm going to close. I mean, I'm not going to leave y'all there with y'all all night. Ungodly, 27 times. Bring out a couple of precepts. Job 16 and 11, the most high have delivered me to the ungodly and turned me over into the hands of the wicked, which is Esau. Esau is the wicked. Esau is also known as the ungodly because they don't believe in the most high. Job 34 verse 18, if it fit to say to a king, thou art wicked and to the princes, you are ungodly. And this, this, the, the rulership of this society, they're wicked and they're ungodly. Now, right here, uh, Romans 5, verse 6, for when we were yet without without strength in due time the most high or the, the Yahweh Shai died for the ungodly. Now the ungodly right here is talking about wicked Israelites because he died for the for the whole nation. So this this place is done man. This place is done. Back in uh, Isaiah 13 and 19, in Babylon, the glory of the kingdom, the beauty of Chaldees' excellency shall be what? As when God overthrew the Most High, overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And I'm going to get ready to close. But like I said, you get people out there that go through the scriptures and they'll read, they'll go to the, to the prophetic parts of the scriptures and they'll say, oh, that means this and this means another situation. No, all of all these precepts go together, which is known as the, um, the time of Jacob's trouble. There's never been a time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble is getting ready to come. So it behooves you. And a lot of y'all out there that used to have camps and go, going out there, guess what? A lot of you nervous right, are, are nervous right now. And don't be surprised if you start seeing a lot of camps all over the place because that fear of the Lord is coming back in them. You know, you fear the Lord because you see the works and the power of the Most High. You begin to see the power of the Most High. But a lot of you are not going to make it because you were, you were hypocrites. You turned, you, you, you did the act of turning your back.
to the pro, to, to the plow, man. You should go to uh, that. You should go to that particular scripture and read that. The Acts. I'm sorry. Let me let me let me go to that. And like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna close on this one. Uh, Luke. Nine and sixty two. You know, anyone that turns his back to the plow is not fit for the kingdom, right? So if you go to, I always go to the uh, Bible Hub for the commentary. And this is what they said. They broke it down right. Mark my words. Watch how many camps you're going to see out there on the highways and the byways. And, this, and the spring is right around the corner. Because they, because they all, saw, we all saw the same news, breaking news. Let me go to this real quick. Let me go to Cambridge. I said, no man having put his hand to the plow, he who would make straight uh, furrows must not look about him. Uh, he sioid, whatever that means, works and days. The light plow, the, the light plows of the east, easily overturned, required constant attention. The light plows of the east, easily overturned, required constant attention. So when the Lord said that about the plow, you look back or you get distracted, the, the plow is going to fall over or you're not going to be able to make a straight line. So now you got to go back and you got to, you got to, you got to, you got to uh, smooth out whatever you plowed and then you got to go back again. So you plow so you can put the seeds in there. In the ancient world, you, you made gaps in the soil, and then you threw the seed down, and then you would cover it over, and then it would grow, whatever, the, whatever fruit it was. So the man that owned, the, owned that, that field, he didn't want your bullshit, man. He'd get rid of you. Look, you out. Get out of here. Okay, it says the general lesson of, of this section is give yourself wholly to your duty and count the cost. A lot of you are not doing that. A lot, they, and I can name names. There's so many out there that were in this work and they do a disappearing act. You don't see them do videos. You don't see them. They, out, they with it. Well, you, you thought they were dead. You thought they went to another planet. You don't see them for like a whole year. Then a year later, you see all of a sudden they pop up and they act, they have the attitude like they never left. Most I ain't dealing with a person like that. Give diligence to make that call in election sure. And if you have that attitude and we find out about it, you know, you you out of here, man. We ain't dealing with you. You your spirit ain't with our spirit, man. It said the Messiah cannot accept a conditional servant service. Neither hardship nor bereavement, nor home ties must delay us from following him. Is it more than a curious? accident that the last four incidents illustrated the peculiarities 
of the four marked human temperaments. So you got to pull out these words and you got the precepts to go with it. Let me give, give you this word, mel, mel, melancholic. Uh, in your melancholy. Let me go to uh, melancholic definition. Melancholic. Melancholic. Feeling or expressing uh, pensive sadness. Let me come back. Over here, where am I? Okay, that's obvious, not it. Sanguine, sanguine. Okay, sanguine means optimistic or positive, especially in an apparently bad or difficult situation. So we're in a bad and difficult situation. We got to deal with the hell. We're under Esau. If the, a police officer wants to pull you over, state trooper, whatever, you got to deal with it. So you're in this hell, but you got to have a positive attitude about it. See, a lot of these guys fall off. There was a video I was watching the, uh, yeah, last night of this guy that rolled up on uh, the GMS Baltimore camp. And he said he used to be an Israelite. He mentioned my name. He mentioned Yohanna. He mentioned Ariah. He mentioned the seven and all that. So he was obvious, obviously in the school back in the 90s. And he said the reason why he left because the year 2000, the Lord didn't come. He said, we, we were looking forward to it. Well, get, well, guess what? I was looking forward to it, too. So what did you do after the year 2000? You turned your back on the, on the plow. You were not sanguine. Let's look at this. I can't even pronounce this word. Let me go look at let me look this up. A phlegmatic. Phlegmatic. Whatever the hell that means. That's not using the hood. It says of a person having an unemotional and uh, stole it, stole the stole, stole it, believe, calm disposition. In other words, you got to have a poker face in this truth. You know, if, when it rains, you might want to say, well, it's raining too hard. Or it's cold, or it's too cold. That's why the that's why the apostle Paul said the Lord spoke to to the apostle Paul, saying, "In season, be instant, or be ready in season, out of season." 
If it's cold, you got to deal with it. If it's too hot, you got to deal with it. And guess what? I'll take the cold weather over the summer. I can't stand the damn summer, man. Hey, winter ain't all that bad. That fucking summer, man, is a bitch. The only good season, seasons to speak in is fall and spring. Winter is hard, but summer is really the hardest, man. Anyway, um, with that, I'm going to say uh, Shalom.